Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I'm going to continue the series on the pattern of defense with the Karklins Martinovsky variation, which is a seldom used line that Magnus Carlsen played in the World Championship match against Fabiano Caruana last winter. And the game ended in a draw, but it's still a very interesting variation. It was pointed out uh, in the comments and um, uh, originally I didn't mean to cover it because it's not significant enough, but then I decided to because if Magnus Carlsen uses it, then it probably should be covered. So, okay, first of all, uh, it's a rare line and most players with the black pieces are not going to expect that. That's the best thing about it, I would say. So after e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, knight to knight takes e5, d6, the normal move here is knight to f3. After knight to f3, you enter the Kozio, the Nimcovic, or the classical Petrov. Uh, there's also the move knight takes f7, which we've looked at before, uh, the Cochrane Gambit. And uh, this variation we want to look at today is knight to d3. This is the Karklins Martinovsky variation, and as I said, not very popular. There have only been uh, 20 games from this position on the highest level or on the high level, so it's uh, very rare. Uh, after knight to d3, well, there are some upsides, there are some downsides. Firstly, uh, your knight is blocking the bishop, so d3 is not a move you can play normally, d4 as well, and still you are leaving the e4 pawn unprotected, same as with knight to f3, so black can simply take the e4 pawn. And that's what black should play. Now, uh, the normal continuation here uh, to justify knight d3, which, which seems to be disrupting white's development, is the move queen to e2, attacking the knight, and with the possibility of f3, of course, winning the knight. So after queen to e2, which is the best move for white, black, uh, once again, same as in the Cosio attack, has to play queen to e7. If the knight is protected, protected in any way, then f3 uh, wins the piece. So queen to e7. And here we are going to look at three different moves. Uh, three moves which have been played before. Uh, the rarest move, the, the move that is least commonly played, is best according to the engines, and it's the move that Magnus Carlsen used against Fabiano Caruana. And that's the move knight to f4, which seems very strange, but it's, it unblocks the d-pawn and prepares normal development. The other move, apart from knight to f4, we are going to look at is knight to c3, which is a combination between the Kozio attack and the Nimcovic attack, sort of allowing black to double your pawns, and then still with your knight on d3, uh, it's hard to develop the bishop. Okay. And the third move we are going to look at is the move b3, which seems very logical in my opinion, and I think if I didn't know the position and I had to play on from here, I would probably play b3. F3 is not an option, it weakens the king side, and uh, once the knight moves to F6, you can exchange the queens, but you don't have anything really. There are more useful moves to make. <clears throat> so let's look at knight to c3 first. Knight c3 is the main line. At the end of the video, we are also going to look at the Carlsen Caruana game to see uh, how that went. Okay, uh, knight to c3. Uh, basically asking uh, black to take the knight. The main move is knight to f6, but if black takes on c3, then d takes c3, opening up the bishop, queen takes c2, bishop takes c2, bishop e7, castles, castles. Not much going on here. Uh, the preferred uh, side to castle at with your pawns doubled on the c file is queen side, which can also be played. Uh, but uh, in this position, a move such as bishop here, castles, castles is okay, but you don't really have that many chances with the queens traded off, and uh, it's not as aggressive. You have the bishop pair pointing at the king side, but not doing much. You have a knight which is awkwardly placed on d3, and of course you are up in development, but there's nothing major going on. So the main move after bishop e7 is castle short, and after castle short, this this is fine, slightly better for white because of the development and nothing major going on. But after knight to c3, the main move for black isn't to, to take the knight, which would uh, then of course develop the bishop. Black is much better off playing the knight to f6, because now whatever happens, and the queen exchange is going to happen, uh, white is going to have to waste some more moves to develop the c1 bishop. So white in this position plays the move knight to f4, unblocking the d-pawn. 
Black exchanges, take stakes. Black plays c6, stopping the knights coming into b5 or d5, which can be an annoying move looking at c7, so c6 is a key move. Castles, d5, rook to e1, bishop to d6, knight h5, an exchange happens, and after knight takes h5, bishop h5 check, because the rook is checking the king, king f8, d3. Uh, almost completely equal i don't know what to say really it's it's basically all zeros according to the engines from a human perspective it might be slightly easier to play for white because your king is castled but still i think that doesn't mean that much after a move such as g6 chasing the bishop away king g7 the king can uh the king can uh, free up the rook black can develop easily let's say bishop to f5 knight to d7 or even knight to a6 knight to c5 might come in handy and black is basically in time to defend against any possible threats uh, white c3 knight is restricted and doesn't have that much scope the only hope i see for it is coming to g3 and into f5 if that's even a possibility so the knight with uh, after knight d3 knight takes e4 queen e2 queen e7 the knight with knights uh, the line with knight c3 I wouldn't say is very promising for white and I would avoid that. In either case, whether black plays knight f6 or exchanges the c3 knight, I don't think white has that much. Okay. Uh, the second move uh, I want to look at after knight to d3, knight takes e4, uh, queen to e2, queen to e7, is what Magnus Carlsen played. Now let's look at that. Uh, he played the move knight to f4, which might seem counterintuitive, might seem strange, uh, but... Uh, it makes some sense freeing up the d3 pawn and i think he chose the variation basically to confuse fabiano caruana but unfortunately for magnus fabiano was perfectly prepared and he chose uh, a variation which gave him enough chances to draw so there are two moves here the main move is knight to f6 offering a queen exchange and what fabiano caruana played and what i think is the best move is knight to c6 after knight c6 you are bringing another piece into play and uh, not immediately offering a queen trade and the knight on c6 is very useful it can come into d4 it can come into e5 is defending the queen it can come here threatening the c2 pawn and i think this is probably the best minor piece on the board for the moment so white to compensate for that because this position is equal this is all zeros which is very rare uh, for for white to to have on move six to allow black to equalize the only move to compensate for the equality is knight d5 attacking the queen and now black shouldn't really uh, retreat the queen the only move to stay in the game is knight d4 counter attacking and white doesn't have that many options the queen if it goes to d1 then you are looking at discovered checks if it goes to, to g4 it will be taken by the bishop h5 doesn't make much sense either and uh, i think that in order to defend you need to take the black queen another threat you're looking at is knight takes c2 so even if you move the queen and you somehow manage to survive the discovered checks you are still looking at knight takes c2 so why should basic why should basically take on e7 knight takes e7 knight takes c2 now knight to d5 by white saving the knight knight to d4 saving uh saving black's knight and this is what happened in their game so we are going to look uh, at the, the game later on to see how the game evolved now the, the continuation here knight a3 knight e6 knight b5 didn't happen in the game but i think it's very interesting because you're putting a lot of pressure on the c7 pawn and the king has to help so king to d8 so already you have misplaced the king now you need to be careful because your knights are under pressure so f3 gaining a tempo on the knight F, knight f6 knight takes f6 gf g takes f6 and i like this line for white i like this line very much and i actually think white has chances to win this game because the doubled f pawns are a horrendous weakness and if you ever manage to blockade them with the knight or with the bishop and fix them as weaknesses then you are going to have something to exploit well on the other hand black doesn't have a single target in your position the only weakness you have is the misplaced knight which isn't really doing anything anymore on b5 so this variation i think white is much better so let's look at that once again so knight c6 was uh, was the move the best move for black in my opinion knight d5 knight d4 counter attack take take save the knight save the knight knight to a3 defending c2 you need to defend this pawn 
Knight to e6 and now that the threat is no longer here on the c2 pawn you can now move the knight, knight b5 with, with the threat of your own. Uh, black doesn't have a way to defend this, c6 would lose because of knight c7, so king d8 and now f3 chasing the knight away and uh, the knight doesn't really have to go to f6, it's just the best square. If it goes into b5, uh, into c5, I'm sorry, then it can get harassed further on uh, with the move b4 and it will end up uh, on the d7 square, so f6 is objectively the best square and after takes takes doubling the pawns, white has a comfortable game. The first play I think should be employed is b3, bishop to b2, putting pressure on this diagonal, so b3, rook g8, bishop to b2, f5, uh, saving the pawn of course, knight to d4, putting pressure on the pawn, bishop g7, ignoring that, and now uh, the game gets complicated and you need to calculate this further. Uh, one line I found in which white sacrifices a pawn is, in my opinion, uh, uh, no, it, he doesn't sacrifice a pawn here, he exchanges, but I think this is still better for white. Uh, now look at, let's look at f5, knight d4, bishop g7 once again. Uh, of course you don't have to go for that, uh, knight takes e6, uh, undoubles the pawns, and it is with check of course, so... Uh, Black cannot take the bishop on b2, and it's still really hard to, to do something if you don't want to lose your bishop. So we should come back a few moves. f5 is the best move for black, and I think it's really hard to find that move. So after f5, perhaps knight to d4 shouldn't be the way to play. I've been looking at some other moves. Among others, I've been looking uh, at moving the bishop, trying to sacrifice my g2 pawn, but that doesn't really work. So in the end, I ended up playing king to king to f2, and uh, I found this move very interesting. I don't really know what black does. Against this, he would have to chase the knight away, but I can always play knight to c3. So I think this variation uh, is the best way to, pray, to play the Karklins Martinovsky. So let's go back from the top. Knight e5, d6. Now, not knight f3, but knight d3. Knight takes e4, queen to e2, queen to e7, and the move Magnus Carlsen chose knight to f4. Now we are going to look at knight to f6 for black later on, but if black plays knight to c6, which seems to be the best option, then this line knight d5, knight e4, knight e7, knight e2, knight e5, knight e4, knight e3, knight e6, knight b5 is in my opinion better for white. Now after knight f4, uh, the most popular move for black is knight to f6, and uh, since Fabiano Caruana didn't choose that uh, in the World Championship match, and I'm sure he knows it, because he knows everything about the Petrov, then I think knight c6 uh, should be favorable. After knight f6 though, white continues with knight c3, uh, we have queen takes queen, bishop takes queen, c6, once again restraining the knight from the key squares, castles, bishop e7, d4, castles, bishop d2, Rook e8, rook f e1, d5. Now we have it. Uh, after the move knight to f6, you enter the normal Petrov with white having a weird knight on f4. Now, to be honest, I have some fine squares for the knight on e5 and stuff like that, but it can always be dislodged with the move f6. And you have the symmetrical pawn structure uh, in the Petrov, with even the white knight being in the way on c3. So I can't really find the flaw in knight to f6. If this is best play, I think that black is equal and perfectly fine. I would even argue that white has two bad knights. Uh, both of these knights don't really look that good. So I would recommend for the players with the black pieces who play the Petrov, if you face knight f4 in this variation, to play the move knight to f6. It's simpler than knight c6, even though knight c6 is more active. I think uh, that with knight f6 you are not going to have any problems. Now, why Caruana played uh, knight c6, I don't know. Perhaps to confuse Magnus Carlsen, but then Magnus Carlsen was prepared as well. So what can you do? Now let's look at their game. Uh, I want to look at it from this position. Uh, knight f4, knight c6, knight e5. We already looked at this. Knight e4, knight a3. Knight e6 was played in this position, but Magnus didn't choose the move knight b5, which I think is the best move, forcing the king to d8. He chose f3 first. And now in this position, <clears throat> it's slightly different. So Fabiano Caruana didn't go to f6, uh, offering uh, Magnus to double his pawns. He went to c5. And uh, Magnus played uh, what seems to be a pawn sacrifice here, but it can't really be taken. So he played d4, chasing the knight farther away. If the black knight takes, then knight takes c7, winning the, the exchange or even the whole rook. It's questionable whether the whether black can trap the knight. Uh, the c2 pawn is of course defended, so after knight takes d4, knight c7, check, king d8, knight takes rook, uh, black cannot take on c2. So this was... Uh, 
a bluff, it wasn't a real, real pawn sacrifice, knight d7, c3 solidifying d4 now, and now c6, stopping knight b5, chasing the knight away from d5, so knight f4, knight b6, uh, bishop to d3, d5, bishop c2, and there you have it. Unfortunately, they reached the symmetrical pattern of pawn structure. The game ended in a draw. You can find it on chess games, com, on chess database, chess base, Lee chess, whatever you want. You can study the game further on. But I think that Magnus didn't use the opportunity to, to create an initiative in the game. So I think that the main issue here was after knight a3, uh, knight e6, that he played f3 first. Perhaps he missed, uh, he mixed the move order or something, but I think that the move knight b5 is a necessity which forces the king to d8, and only after that you can play f3. And uh, now in the same variation, of course, d4 is uh, even more defended, so it doesn't, uh, so it's even better for white in my opinion. So okay, uh, that's for that game. Now let's look at the third move. Uh, the third move I want to look at, uh, which I find very interesting uh, to fight the Petrov in this variation, is move b3. Uh, the move b3 uh, simply prepares to develop the bishop uh, to the most natural diagonal, putting pressure here, and doesn't do much about the d3 pawn, the d2 pawn. Black continues with knight c6, bishop b2, bishop to f5, defending the knight, knight to c3, and now Black's best option is to capture. Uh, knight takes c3. You can capture with the bishop, uh, and that's a good move, but you'd be surprised that uh, the best move and the main move, well, in the only game ever played, is d takes c3. The point of d takes c3 is that you are restraining the black knight from coming into b4 and d4, and you are also putting the, the brakes on d5, d4. So this move, even though it might seem counterintuitive, uh, can can have several purposes. Now, if black uh, doesn't stop the move c4, then white is going to have a great position. Okay, queen takes c2, bishop takes c2, and black now immediately plays the move d5. He wants to play d4, and he's also stopping the move c4. White castles queen side, uh, I'm sorry, white castles queen side, bishop to d6 developing, bishop to f3 attacking the pawn, bishop e6 defended, defending g3, uh, defending h2 so that the rook can move, castle slung, rook h to e1. And this is the start of the variation, and I think that it's imbalanced enough for either side to be able to win. I wouldn't say that white is better, but if you are looking for uh, imbalances against the Petrov, this variation might be fine. And you might even encounter players with black who are unfamiliar with the line, which of course is going to happen because it has only been played 20 times, knight to d3. So I think this is very promising. Let's continue. Rook h to e8, white plays h4, gaining space, uh, knight to e7, and now there's a strange move for white which I don't really like. This is the pawn sacrifice I, I mentioned before, which the engine likes and I would never play it during a real game. So you are looking at the g7 pawn with your bishop, so the idea is to sacrifice your pawn here to take on g7, but I don't really like that. The line goes c4, dc4, bc4, uh, bishop takes c4, and after bishop takes g7, bishop takes a2. And apparently this is equal, and white has compensation for the pawn because he opened up uh, the, the queen side, and that might be true, but I still think that there isn't enough compensation for the pawn. There could be some lines, uh, let's say you try to bring your rooks to b1 and to a1. Now immediately if you play the move king to d2, you are going to be in trouble almost. Still the bishop is saving the position, but let's say this happens, check. Here you would have to give up your bishop. And as the pieces get traded off, uh, there are less and less chances for a successful attack. So I really don't believe that this pawn sacrifice is enough. But if you come back to b3, and this position, uh, perhaps even taking with the bishop, uh, without the idea of c4, uh, let's say queen takes, uh, I'm sorry, bishop takes c3, queen takes here, bishop takes here, let's say uh, black castles, white castles. I like white's chances here, I think the bishop is great and it's putting pressure on the diagonal, and uh, I think that if anyone can be in trouble, then it's going to be black. So yeah, I would recommend this move. Uh, knight to f4 seems interesting, but as I said, in this position after knight to f4, I'm worried about the move knight to f6 and the complete equality. After knight c6, as I said, as we saw in the Carlson Caruana game, <coughs> white stands better, but after knight f6, it's completely equal. And the move b3 uh, promises uh, inequality, uh, at least uh, in, the, in the pawn structure, 
and in the peace activities. So I think that B3 should be your preferred method uh, to, to play this variation. Still, uh, to conclude, I think that after D6, Knight to D3 might be a nice sideline to confuse black. I still prefer the Nimcovic attack after Knight to F3. But this is playable and you are giving your opponent uh, chances to go wrong. And uh, that's what makes it definitely interesting. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope you like the variation. Uh, once again, you can find the Carlson Caruana game online uh, if you want to look at the whole game. Uh, let me know what you think about the variation. Let me know if you've ever played it or seen it. And uh, once again, thank you for the support. Thank you for the comments. Uh, and stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye-bye.